Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to History at War. Today we have something that is hidden deep within the annals of history. A secret German operation to dismantle a weapon of mass destruction behind Soviet lines. A very daring operation that could not afford to go wrong. It started when Tabun Gas, also known as GA, German, Gift Gas A, was a class of nerve agent. It was the first nerve agent ever synthesized and was discovered in the late 1930s by German chemist Gerhard Schroeder while working at the chemical company IG Farben. Tabun is a highly toxic chemical compound that affects the nervous system, causing severe disruption of nerve signals and leading to paralysis and death. Tabun was initially developed as a pesticide, but its toxic properties were recognized and exploited for use as a chemical weapon. The Nazis produced Tabun in large quantities at the Dihernfurth chemical plant in Germany. However, 12,500 tons of this was about to get into the hands of the Soviets. The Germans knew they had to act quickly before it was too late. Understanding the seriousness of this problem, the High Command had to act quickly to undertake this critical operation. The German command meticulously selected Max Sachsenheimer, a distinguished recipient of the Knight's Cross for his exceptional valor and accomplishments on the battlefield. Sachsenheimer had repeatedly demonstrated his prowess by leading and executing missions with remarkable precision. His reputation for orchestrating successful endeavors with small, specialized battle groups made him the ideal candidate for this pivotal assignment. As Sachsenheimer delved into the details of the mission, he was presented with an additional, profound responsibility, safeguarding a group of eminent German scientists. These scientists held the exclusive knowledge required to neutralize the enigmatic facility that stood as a looming threat. While the specifics of the facility's purpose were shrouded in secrecy, Sachsenheimer's inquisitive nature prompted him to question the enigmatic nature of the task at hand. Seeking clarification, he boldly inquired about the contents of the facility. In response, he received a solemn and terse answer. It contains something that can unleash devastation on a catastrophic scale capable of claiming the lives of millions. The gravity of this revelation struck Sachsenheimer with the force of a hammer blow, imprinting upon him the urgency and gravity of the situation. It was unmistakably evident that the Germans had managed to develop a weapon of unfathomable destructive potential. Armed with this knowledge, Sachsenheimer understood the magnitude of his mission. Not only did he need to lead his battle group to accomplish their escort and protection duties, but he also held the lives of countless innocent individuals in his hands. The weight of the situation was unprecedented. The fate of nations hung in the balance. With the weight of the mission pressing upon him, General Sachsenheimer sprang into action. Recognizing the complexity of the task at hand, he meticulously organized two Fallschirmjäger paratrooper companies and pioneer units, equipping them with the necessary tools and resources for the impending operation. Alongside these elite troops, he marshaled a fleet of 80 assault boats and positioned eight Flak 8.8 artillery units to provide robust defensive capabilities. On the morning of the 4th of February, 1945, the Veil of Darkness provided the perfect cover for the German forces as they stealthily navigated their way across through enemy lines in the Oder River. The Cloak of Night aided their advance, and the Soviets found themselves caught in a state of unpreparedness. The element of surprise was firmly on the side of the Germans, leaving the Soviet defenders disarrayed and struggling to formulate a coherent response. Amidst the chaos and confusion that enveloped the Soviet ranks, some soldiers opted for a hasty retreat in the face of the unexpected German assault. Meanwhile, a significant number of Soviet troops were indulging in a luxurious German noble palace situated nearby. Lucky for the Germans, the Soviets were either drunk or passed out with their guard down and their vigilance compromised by their intoxication. As dawn broke and the German forces pressed forward, General Sachsenheimer and his determined men reached their destination, the clandestine facilities that housed the potentially catastrophic weapon. A grueling two-kilometer march on foot had brought them to this critical juncture. Recognizing the paramount importance of defending the facilities against any counterattack, the Flak 8.8 units were strategically deployed, establishing a defensive perimeter that served as a formidable deterrent to any hostile forces. With the defensive position secured, the German scientists tasked with disarming the weapon could now execute their vital work without fear of interruption. The synergy between the military and scientific components of the operation was now in full swing, 
reflecting the fusion of expertise and determination needed to dismantle the weapon of mass destruction. Venturing deep into the top-secret facility, General Saxenheimer found himself in the company of two esteemed professors from the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, their scholarly demeanor juxtaposed against the grim revelations that lay before them. Accompanying this learned duo was a battle-hardened army officer, a figure whose experience in the realm of hazardous substances brought a steely resolve to the mission at hand. Upon crossing the threshold into the hidden chamber, an unsettling realization dawned upon the group. They were standing within the crucible of the Grun Three Inches program, the covert initiative responsible for the large-scale production of a deadly nerve agent known as Taban. The implications of this revelation weighed heavily on the minds of all present. A mere milligram of Taban possessed the capacity to claim a human life, a fact that underscored the sheer lethality of the substance. However, the magnitude of horror increased exponentially as the enormity of the stockpile became apparent. A staggering 12,500 tons of Taboon lay dormant within the facility's confines. This sinister reservoir held the potential to decimate a quarter of Britain's population, casting a chilling shadow over the possibilities that rested within its confines. Yet despite the stark and dire reality that confronted them, there was no room for hesitation. With the fate of millions hanging in the balance, the assembled team resolved to undertake their grim task. Each member of the team understood the gravity of the moment and the urgent need to prevent this catastrophic weapon from being unleashed upon the world. As the first rays of morning light began to pierce through the shroud of darkness, the team set their plan into motion. At precisely 6 a.m., as a new day began to unfold, they methodically opened the valves that held the noxious liquid taboon. The once-contained substance flowed forth, merging with the waters of the odor, becoming diluted and neutralized by the mighty river's currents. It was a moment of profound significance, a deliberate act to dismantle the machinery of death that had been poised to wreak havoc on an unimaginable scale. But it was far from over. As the night arrived, scientists in this facility were there all day draining the poison. The shadows deepened and rain veiled the surroundings. The operation encountered an unexpected hurdle. The assault boats, which had the crucial explosives intended for a crucial phase of the mission, veered off course. The combination of relentless rain and impenetrable darkness confounding their navigational efforts. Inside the clandestine facility, the team of experts continued their grim task of pouring the lethal tabun into the waters of the odor. Their mission was underway, but the situation outside was growing increasingly perilous. On the periphery of the facility, soldiers embarked on a race against time systematically dismantling machinery and erasing documents that held the insidious secrets of taboon production. Abruptly, the ominous silence was shattered by a cacophony of explosions and gunfire, an abrupt onslaught of chaos that signaled the arrival of a Soviet counterattack. The special German battle group was in position holding off the Soviet troops outside the facility. The Fallschirmjager unit was in the forefront. Smashing the Soviet advances, the screams of their MG-42 were obliterating the lines. In the face of this unforeseen assault, the carefully constructed plan teetered on the brink of collapse. The tranquility that had momentarily enveloped the facility was now replaced by the urgent and frenzied symphony of conflict. Reacting swiftly, General Saxenheimer took immediate action. Radio waves crackled to life as he established contact with the headquarters of Army Group Center. In a voice infused with urgency, he relayed a message that encapsulated the essence of the moment. The mission is accomplished. However, I find myself encircled by the enemy. There's a real possibility that I might not emerge from this alive. Long live Germany. Faced with imminent danger and the prospect of ultimate sacrifice, he remained steadfast in his duty to his nation. The aftermath of the initial firefight was swiftly succeeded by a series of thunderous explosions that reverberated through the night. The resounding concussions painted a picture of fierce resistance, punctuated by moments of intense combat. Then, as swiftly as the tempest of conflict had erupted, an eerie quietness descended, a silence broken only by the steady cadence of rainfall. The skillfully emplaced Flak 8.8 artillery units, General Saxenheimer's strategic acumen honed from his experiences in the days of Koval in 1944, had proven their worth once more. Their controlled bursts of fire had acted as an impenetrable shield, the flax annihilating the entire Soviet counterattack. 
General Saxenheimer's aptitude for deploying the flak units with surgical precision had evolved into an art form. His strategic mastery transformed these formidable weapons into instruments of salvation, holding back the tide of aggressors with unwavering efficiency. It was a testament to his unwavering dedication and the lengths to which he had honed his abilities as a military leader. Yet the respite offered by this resounding victory was fleeting. As the echoes of battle faded into the distance, the certainty that more Soviet forces were en route became inescapable. General Saxenheimer recognized the inevitability of this reality, a truth underscored by his seasoned understanding of the ebb and flow of warfare. Acknowledging the urgency of the situation, the German forces chose to withdraw behind the protective embrace of the Oder River once more. However, the retreat was met with a stark revelation. Within the span of a mere 24 hours, the Soviet onslaught had succeeded in overrunning the positions the Germans had fought so fiercely to defend. The tides of fortune had taken a grim turn, casting a darker shadow over General Saxenheimer's efforts. The once again encircled force found itself grappling not only with the physical constraints of their predicament, but also with the weight of their own history. Luck, which had accompanied Saxenheimer through past trials, now seemed to have turned its back. They were again completely surrounded. Following a quick escape from the factory, their strategic retreat across the frozen expanse of the Oder River, General Saxenheimer and his men found themselves ensnared within the confines of the village of Soda. On the retreat, they were getting hit from all directions, and they had to hold up in this village to fight their way back to friendly lines. Here, the stage was set for a harrowing showdown. As the opposing forces clashed with a ferocity that mirrored the high stakes of the situation, the village, once a picture of serene normalcy, now transformed into a battleground of swirling chaos. The exchange of gunfire echoed through the narrow alleys, punctuated by the deafening roars of artillery. Buildings that had once sheltered families now provided cover for soldiers, their interiors marred by the scars of conflict. Amid this maelstrom of violence, General Saxenheimer emerged as a steadfast figure. His MP-40 in hand shooting from every window. His paratrooper units were fighting with him. Machine guns set up in the windows and doorways were holding off the Soviet attackers with ferocity. The explosions of the 88 were heard from the distance firing upon the advancing tanks and infantry. Soldiers were fighting tooth and nail in this small village. The battle raged on with unabating intensity. Finally, as the battle quieted down and as the smoke cleared, a scene of devastation met the eye. Six Soviet tanks, once imposing symbols of armored might, now lay smoldering wrecks. The wreckage of the tanks served as a tangible representation of the audacious defiance that Saxenheimer and his men had displayed, striking back against overwhelming odds. In a pivotal moment, General Saxenheimer himself led a daring breakout attempt. Armed with his MP-40 and bolstered by his equally determined soldiers, he plunged into the fray, carving a path through the encirclement. They had no choice but to make a run for it through ongoing clashes. More Soviet reinforcements were arriving at the scene, illustrating the potential for audacious success even in the darkest of moments. However, this came at a steep cost. The general's rear guard group, composed of some Falschkirmjager who were to hold their ground against the relentless Soviet advance, while the general and the other participants of this operation escaped safely, this rear guard unit held the backbone of the escape, holding off the massive amounts of enemy reinforcements. The rear guard unit was completely destroyed while holding the backbone. The operation, while marred by certain setbacks, was ultimately regarded as a measure of success. The raiding party effectively executed the critical task of neutralizing the poison gas, meticulously draining it from the underground reservoirs. However, despite their efforts, the complete destruction of the factory remained beyond their grasp. The resilience of the enemy's infrastructure presented a formidable challenge that could not be entirely overcome in the context of the operation. The triumph over the toxic threat came at a cost. The raid inflicted casualties among Saxenheimer's men, with some paying the ultimate price in the line of duty. Their sacrifices underscored the grave dangers they confronted in their mission to safeguard the region from the perils of the nerve agent. In recognition of General Saxenheimer's exemplary leadership, 
and the significant strides made in countering the nerve agent threat, he was bestowed a distinguished honor. The symbolic swords were added to his night cross, a testament to his strategic acumen displayed throughout the operation. This esteemed accolade not only recognized his vital role in the successful neutralization of the lethal agent, but also celebrated his unwavering commitment to the safety and security of the populace of his people. As we conclude this video, we sincerely hope that you've gained valuable insights into this often overlooked chapter of World War II history. Exploring this lesser-known raid has been both enlightening and educational. We extend our heartfelt gratitude for your unwavering support, which constantly motivates us to delve deeper into the annals of history. A special mention goes out to our collaborator on Instagram, Ostfront, whose invaluable contributions significantly enriched the content of this video. You can find his link in the description below. Remember, our journey through history doesn't end here. Join us on Patreon for exclusive content and behind-the-scenes insights, and connect with us on Instagram to stay updated on our latest explorations. Thank you once again for being a part of our community. Together, we continue to uncover the hidden gems of history and share them with the world. See you guys soon.